let's talk about entrepreneurship and setting the groundwork for this because it's it's not a easy thing. I think it's a simple thing once you get it right and you understand what's involved and how to engineer it because you can engineer a good business. Like most people by default do it wrong. Just like by default, happy wife, happy life. You know, you hear the vows, uh, riches and, and sickness, uh, health and poor, and it doesn't matter. She's always going to stick around. Don't, don't even sweat it. She's not going anywhere. Just say I do and sign over here and walk around the table and do your reception and it's good boys. Right. And you know, just like with relationships and the red pilling that we get there with whatever it happens to be, she steps out, you know, she, like the whole love into perpetuity doesn't exist. And then you have this awakening. I think a lot of people, when it comes to starting up a business for themselves, at some point have this grand awakening because the illusion of I'm going to be a big boss and be an entrepreneur and run this corporation. And here's my business cards with my name on it. It says president and CEO just underneath there. And you feel grand and special. The vast majority of businesses out there that start will never break more than a million dollars a year in annual sales. The number is something like 97%. So the vast majority of people out there that are holding out to the public that they're an entrepreneur, I'm not saying they're not, but the vast majority of them are not cracking more than a million dollars in annual sales. Um, they're mom and pop shops. They're, you know, your dry cleaners, you know, at the corner, you're the, you know, the corner store that's doing a uh, nail salon stuff, you know, like the standard simplistic conventional cookie cutter thing that we've always been told to do. Like when my granddad in England retired from the Royal air force, you know, he, the first thing he did was he, he was like, right. I want to go and become an entrepreneur. He, you know what he did? He did what everybody else did. He went and opened up a pub, right? Cause that's, Cause that's the path to riches. And he found out it was long hours for not a lot of money and a whole lot of headache. Right? So this is the path that most people choose is something that seems common. Oh, I can set up an e-commerce store and I can move shit, right? Like all I got to do is find it for cheap in China, go to Alibaba, buy a, a crate, a shipping container or whatever of the, of the niche, the product that I want to sell. I'll do Amazon FBA, which is fulfilled by Amazon. I put my shit in their warehouse. I do my ads. I do my paid advertising. Uh, people click, they buy, and then the profit rolls in. And that sounds simple and easy. Oh, you just have to do the research on the right, the right topic. You know, you have to do the research on the right product and make sure you angle it right and you twist it sort of this way. And it's like, it can work for a few months sometimes. The problem when you build your business on somebody else's platform like Amazon is you very quickly learn that it's not stable. You rely on the algorithms when people search for things showing your product. And if your product's a hot seller, anybody can come in and undercut, including Amazon, white label some shit and compete against it and suppress you in the algorithms. And then you go looking for other solutions. Oh, let's go to Shopify. We'll build a Shopify store and then we'll market it on Facebook and uh, Instagram and YouTube pre-roll ads and all that sort of stuff. And it's like, okay, that's another way to do it, right? But then that starts eating into the profit margins. Oh, and by the way, you're moving a physical product. And what happens when you move a physical product? Shit gets lost in the mail. It gets broken. People receive it and they lie and they say they never got it. And you have to reship another one. There's returns. So eliminating the potential and the possibility for chaos and headache in your business can be engineered from the get-go. You know, is a point that I'm making. So I'm just using Amazon FBA just as one example, right? There's lots of other things out there that you hear all the time that, you know, they're on social media. Oh, if you sign up for my program or my university or some shit like this uh, and go and do copywriting or video editing or any version of any of those things, you'll become vastly wealthy and influential and, you know, women will be throwing themselves at you, right? It doesn't work that way. My, my emails are filled till this day. And I keep mentioning this year over year. It's been happening for the last few years because it's been normalized. It's been pumped out in the public so much now. Everybody's a fucking video editor. Everybody. You know what I pay for edited reels? Like 20 bucks. That's it. That's with captions, with music, upload, everything, right? Because there's somebody in Indonesia that's willing to do that for next to nothing. 
it's not a path to riches or wealth, right? It's it's a path out of poverty, maybe in that country where you can make a pretty decent living, but you're not going to be rolling around in a Lambo, right? Like you're going to pay some bills, right? Like it'll be fine. Copywriting is another one too. Emails blowing up all the time. I'm meeting my copywriting. They DM me. It's like they all have these creative like ways to sort of try to get your attention, but you're one of a couple of dozen every single day, seven days a week, 30 days a month, you know, 12 months of the, like, you know, it, it adds up and you're competing for the attention of entrepreneurs, which for the most part, like guys like me, I write my own copy, right? Like I'll do my own emails. So if you get on my email list and you get an email, it's from me. So back to the, uh, you know, paths to, to wealth when it comes to becoming an entrepreneur. Um, what other example, like you guys tell me what you can think of in the chat that is a potential path to wealth, right? You know, you get guys that say that they're in the weed business, like I do 420. Okay. So let's say that you're in the cannabis business or the CBD business, or you're a grower or you're, you're or you're a distributor, right? Uh, here anyway, in Canada, if you get the license to open up a dispensary, then you've got to have a physical storefront with signage, with rent, you know, license agreements. And I know guys that are in the space, they got in the space early before the licenses were handed out like candy. Uh, and you had to jump through legislative hoops to get them. And there were so few that were available. They actually made money. But now again, the markets become saturated. So I don't know where James is that, that does, you know, like 420 or whatever that is. But um, for the most part, again, moving a physical product, you have to have storefront. You have to have regulators up your ass about everything. These are things that you can engineer into a business that you can avoid, right? Chris says, I told certain institution, institutional clients to kick rocks when they said they needed our jobs. We When they said we needed our jobs to do their work, I think that's jabs. I still won't touch the work regardless of value. See, that's when you're in a position to say no, right? Like that's ideally what, entrepreneurship should get you to is a position of F you, not just F you to, you know, point at people and say F you, but F you as an F you money. So you don't need to take jobs. You don't need to do or perform tasks because of that. Um, what else we got in here? Considering opening own practice as CPA, your thoughts. So anything to do with accounting is a service. One of the downsides to working as an accountant one it's 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 not the most unless you really love numbers and reconciling columns and stuff like that it's not the most interesting <coughs> line of work or business excuse me i mean i've been fortunate enough to have some cool accountants and i select accountants to work with that i want to sit down and have lunch with if I don't jive, we're not doing business. So again, you know, things with professional designation, like, you know, we're talking earlier about you can make a good amount of money if you're a licensed accountant. He's saying, should I open up my own practice? So versus being a accountant that's licensed to work in an office as an employee versus being the employer and employing other people to work for you, you have to take on the task of marketing, acquiring clients, customer service. You got to procure uh, space, uh, licensing, dues. Um, you need E&O insurance, errors and omission um, in case you ever get sued. Um, you're probably going to have a lawyer on retainer running your own business. And it's location dependent to a certain region, which I'm not a big fan of, right? Because again, if something happens and you want to pick up your business and just go somewhere else. You can go to another country. You can get a Starlink and drive an RV around North and South America if you want and do your business that way. You can be on a sailboat in the middle of the ocean with a, a Starlink and do your business that way. I'm not a big fan of location dependent businesses, which keep you anchored to a certain locale, right? Because then you're stuck there, right? Like you've set down roots. You want to get up and go somewhere else. It's not always plausible, right? Legislation and rules can change in the jurisdiction that you're licensed to work in that aren't favorable, which I saw happen here in my debt business between 2010 and 2013, right? I've talked about that before. So is it a easy, lucrative, and fun business opening up a practice as a CPA? 
No, I would say no, it's not. Let me scroll through a few more of these, see what you guys are on about here. Again, if you have any questions or examples that you want me to touch on, what do you think about a bookkeeping business? Another good question. That's another business that's location dependent, requires you to market to people to get their business. It's a low billable rate. Um, bookkeepers here, 90 to 110 bucks an hour, you know, maybe 80 on the lower end if they're junior, if they work from their own home. Um, it's a time for money job, right? So if you can only bill $80 an hour, for example, and um, you've only got three or four hours of work one day, then what are you doing the rest of the time? You're going to schmooze. You're going to have to try to find some business. You're going to have to try to find some clients. And even if you're maxed out fully, you know, throughout the day, right? Like, let's say that you're fully maxed out. You're doing 80 hours, right? That's $6,400 per pay period, right? Sorry, let's go 6,400 times uh, 26 weeks because that's usually standard. So that's $166,000 a year. So if you're a bookkeeper, fully booked, okay, 80 hour work weeks bi-weekly for an entire year, the maximum you're ever going to earn is $166,000. That's it. Now you're going to have to take away your expenses to run that business. You might be left with $100,000. You might actually arguably be better off working for somebody getting paid $100,000 so you don't have to deal with the headache of all the other bullshit because like the max cap you're going to make is 166 dollars right? $166,400. So I'm not a big fan of trading time for money at a low rate. Look, if you're a very successful lawyer and you're billing yourself out at $1,000 an hour, um, cool. That's way better than 80 or, or 110, right? Uh, it's still going to cap you, right? Like, Let's take a lawyer that bills himself out at $1,000 an hour. That's $80,000 times 26. That's uh, 2.08 million. You're doing real well. You're doing real, real well. But you're working all the fucking time doing law, which uh, honestly, I would rather gouge my eyeballs out than read all that shit. Let's see what else we got here. Human beings are the worst part of a business. So that's the other thing too, right? You can engineer a business that doesn't require employees. I've employed a lot of people, okay? In this business and in the, in the corporations that I worked for prior to that, I've employed or terminated hundreds and hundreds of people, right? There's flaws with human beings. There's a reason why McDonald's is now opening up fully automated McDonald's outlets now that are open 24 seven, the robots cook everything perfectly every single time delivered faster than any human being can flip a burger or, or drop fries into a tray. It's, it's, it's a process and a system that is far more profitable for them because they don't have to deal with an employee that calls in sick, doesn't show up, has to take mat leave. They're banging other employees in the back room and HR has to get involved and all of a sudden Karen's yelling at somebody. There's none of these problems that that exist in an environment where you don't have a human being working as an employee and that takes the humans out of the equation i think you're going to see um you know things like universal basic income kick off and you know become a lot more popular you're going to be seeing people getting like a a base stable like living i'm not going to call it a wage but a living donation monthly from the government because let's be honest i mean they just print money so who fucking cares right like it's just the way the government operates now so you're going to see a lot of these low level things automate or outsource or made obsolete, you know, if anything, and having employees is something that you can engineer into a business or you can engineer out of the business. Um, the kinds of businesses that I talk about in my course in the school of entrepreneurship are what are defined as easy, lucrative, and fun. And they're usually either service or information based. So there's no products to move or sell or stock in a warehouse or return or get broken or get lost or any of that bullshit. So it's either a service type of business or it's an information type of business. It's location independent, meaning you don't have to have a storefront with a neon sign and a door that's locked and unlocked with store hours in the front or any of that shit. It's not, it's never going to have to comply with stand on this dot, wear a face diaper or take this experimental jab because it's location independent and it sells a service or information. And you also generally don't need employees. 
You might need some contractors to do some work. I've, I've got some contractors that do work for me, but I don't have any salaried employees that are ever going to, you know, well, let me talk to HR because, you know, Becky was mean to me today. Fuck that shit. I don't have time for that stuff anymore. I really hope you guys enjoyed that clip. If you want to watch the full length podcast, you can find that over here, that clips from. If you're newer to the channel, make sure you hit subscribe over here and pin down below in the top comment. You'll find a bunch of useful links to my website, my supplement line books, and a bunch of other stuff. Have an amazing day. Peace out.